What's going on guys, it's the Draft Nerd, and today we're going to be reviewing Pro Football Network's Mock Draft, and I believe it was written by Will Helms. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, coming in at number one, it looks like we got the Carolina Panthers taking Luther Burden, the receiver out of Missouri. And the good thing about this draft cycle is we still don't have a clear-cut number one player. You know, in last year's class, it was Caleb Williams from beginning to end. Uh, the year before that, for the most part, it was Bryce Young beginning to end with C.J. Stroud, you know, being sprinkled in there. Uh, but we haven't really had a, you know, a number one spot up in the air. So it's pretty fun seeing guys like Luther Burden getting some love. Will Johnson's been the number one pick before. A lot of people have James Pierce Jr. from Tennessee. Um, I've even seen Travis Hunter, Carson Beck, Shadur Sanders. Like, there's a lot of number one overall picks. But I don't really see the Carolina Panthers taking an offensive player if they're here at number one. Solely because they upgraded that offense a lot this past offseason. Bringing in guys like Robert Hunt, Damian Lewis, the two guards. Bringing in Deontay Johnson, drafting Xavier Leggett in the first round. Like, they really did a lot of work to that offense to help Bryce Young thrive. And meanwhile, by doing that, they really depleted that defense. They lost guys like Brian Burns, Frankie Louvu. Um, Jeremy Chin, like they lost a lot of key players on that defense. So replenishing that defense, I would, you know, much rather prefer getting a guy like Will Johnson to be, you know, that number one corner, that lockdown corner, or even a um, James Pierce Jr. Because, you know, you, you got guys like Derek Brown on the defensive line, but he's not necessarily a pass rusher. He's more of a run stuffer. So. You don't really have any pass rush help. So getting one of those two guys would be more ideal in my opinion. But Luther Burns still a really good player. Like it would still be fun to see him on the Panthers. Moving on to number two, we got the Tennessee Titans taking Will Johnson, the quarterback out of uh, Michigan. So Will Johnson is my number one player in this class. I think he's unbelievable. I think he's on that same level of a Sauce Gardner, a Derek Stingley, you know, guys like that. So... You know, I wouldn't be mad at him going number one, but I really do think he's a top five player. And I'll see sometimes in some mock drafts him falling out of the top five, which I think is ludicrous. But regardless, the Titans did bring in Legeria Sneed. Um, but getting a younger player and a Will Johnson, I think, you know, a fantastic pick. Maybe I would have gone with a pass rusher and a James Pierce Jr. or a Nick Scourton, um, just because they do have Legeria Sneed. But. Regardless, you can't go wrong with Will Johnson. Moving on to number three, we got the New England Patriots taking Mason Graham, the defensive tackle out of Michigan. Uh, same thing, Mason, uh, Mason Graham is one of the best defensive tackles I've seen in a while. He, I think he's on that same tier, maybe a little bit of a notch below Jalen Carter, but he's still, in my opinion, a blue chip prospect. And, you know, I know they don't play the same position, but Matthew Judon's definitely not coming back after this season. So getting... Just someone on that defensive line that could potentially be, you know, to the same talent level as a Matthew Judon, I think is a good idea. So, you know, I'm not mad at all at that pick for the Patriots. Moving on to number four, we got the Denver Broncos taking Kelvin Banks Jr., the offensive tackle out of Texas. Now, I actually agree with this pick. A lot of people have Will Campbell as their offensive tackle one and, you know, the first offensive tackle going off the board. I'm slightly a bigger fan of Kelvin Banks Jr., I mean, they're neck and neck between him and Will Campbell. I just like Kelvin Banks' length a little bit more because, to me, Will, Will Campbell looks a little bit short in the arms. You know, I don't have an official measurement or nothing like that, but just off the eye test, Kelvin Banks looks a little bit more lengthy, which I like in my offensive of tackles. Um, but, yeah, getting a replacement for Garrett Bowles, I mean, he's not, you know, very happy, it seems, in Denver. Um, either way, you got the other side of the offensive line, too, he could play at, so... You know, either way, I like that pick a lot for the Broncos. And I like that as Kelvin Banks as opposed to Will Campbell. Moving on to number five, we got the first quarterback going off the board in Jalen Milrow, the quarterback out of Alabama. Now, I really like Jalen Milrow. I think his ceiling is probably the best in this class, but I also think his floor might be the worst in this class. He's got a big margin of, you know, where he might end up as a player. And taking that at number five is definitely a big risk. But when you're picking in the top five and you're trying to get a quarterback, you want to try to take that home run swing. And Jalen Milrow is that. So I'm not mad at it. Would I prefer maybe a safer pick in a Carson Beck or Shadur Sanders? Maybe. But I'm not going to get mad at a Jalen Milrow. The upside is definitely there for him. 
Moving on to number six, we got the New York Giants taking Cameron Ward, the quarterback out of Miami. Now, I know I just said taking a home run hit, and Cameron Ward is, you know, basically a lesser version of Jalen Milrow. They're both athletic quarterbacks with cannons for arms, but aren't very developed upstairs and, you know, reading defenses, identifying blitzes. They're kind of the same player, except Cameron Ward just does everything a little bit worse than Jalen Milrow, in my opinion. So, like I said, for the Giants, which are my favorite team, so I'm a little bit, you know, biased, I would much rather a safer pick here. I do not think Cameron Ward is going to reach his potential, as opposed to Jalen Milrow, who I think has a better chance of reaching that potential. I would much rather just have a guy who can, you know, just play the position at a safe level, like a Carson Beck, Shudder Sanders, and even... Throw in, if you want to take a home run swing, go with a Connor Wigman or a Jalen Daniels. Cameron Ward, I don't think should be sniffed in the first round, in my opinion. Moving on to number seven, we got the Arizona Cardinals taking Deion Walker, the defensive tackle out of Kentucky. And I do think Deion Walker could be a top 10 pick in this uh, coming class. The only problem is he needs to work on lowering his pad level. Um, right now, he just he gives up any type of leverage he might have. And he's also a bigger guy, like 6'6". So, you know, he doesn't have much natural leverage to begin with. And when he does get that leverage, he usually gives it up by firing out of his stance a little too high. If he's able to fix that, which I do think is a fixable mistake, I think he could be worth a top 10 pick. And getting guys on that defensive line is, you know, a good idea, in my opinion, for the Cardinals. Getting anything to do with defense, I think, is a, a W in my books. But uh, BJ Ojolari, if you didn't know, did tear his ACL. I believe like one or two days ago. So, you know, just replenishing that defensive line is a good idea in my opinion. If you want even more draft content and my full 2025 draft guide, my Patreon is the perfect thing for you. You'll get access to all of my player rankings, which are updated daily. Plus, you'll get to see my full summer eval on players, advanced stats on players, and my draft grades on them as well. Not to mention weekly mock drafts and mock draft reactions. It's the best way to support me and the channel. Not to mention it's only $5. Again, only $5. You can't even get a Big Mac for that price anymore. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or the pin link in the comments and join the family over there on patreon now back to the video moving on to number eight we got probably the most popular pick in every mock draft and that's the washington commanders going travis hunter the wide receiver slash cornerback out of colorado now i am going to read this excerpt to make sure that i understand this correctly listen i have some reservations about travis hunter's ability to play over a thousand snaps in nine games as he did in 2023 however he has legitimate talent even Wins both sides of the ball, athleticism, more refined technique. He needs, okay, I don't think he's, you know, saying he's going to play either position in the NFL. For me, I'm probably on the side of Travis Hunter playing receiver, which I think is in the minority. I think a lot of people like him more as a cornerback than a receiver, but I think he has some real traits at the receiver position. But what I will say is he's going to have to pick. He's not going to be able to play both sides in the NFL. And if you're going to the Commanders, the Commanders already took a very, very small cornerback in Emmanuel Forbes last year. And Travis Hunter isn't the biggest guy either. He's, I'm pretty sure he's maybe listed at like 185. I wouldn't be surprised if he's less than 180. So having two really thin cornerbacks in that, you know, secondary, if you go against a, you know, a team with a bigger receiving core like the Eagles who have A.J. Brown or you know, Mike Evans, they're not going to be able to hold their own against those bigger guys. So if the commanders do take Travis Hunter, I'd much rather him play receiver and play alongside Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, and then Travis Hunter. But again, that would be a small receiving core as well. So I don't know. I don't know. Moving on to number nine, we got the New Orleans Saints taking James Pierce Jr., the edge rusher out of Tennessee. And I really like James Pierce Jr. I think he's got all the upside in the world. Um, you know, he's an athletic freak, similar to a Dallas Turner, but with even more juice, in my opinion. I think he's even more athletic than a Dallas Turner. Um, and the Saints typically go with bigger defensive ends. Uh, you know, they took a, what was the Notre Dame edge rusher from a year or two ago, um, Isaiah Foskey. They took him, who was a bit of a smaller guy. Um, so maybe they're trending more in the direction of getting athletic edge rushers, and that's exactly what James Pierce Jr. is. And I do think he should be the first edge rusher off the board, so I'm not mad at that pick either. 
Moving on to number 10, we got the Minnesota Vikings going Benjamin Morrison, the cornerback out of Notre Dame. Um, yeah, the tragedy with Kyrie Jackson. Um, they thought they might have fixed their secondary problems with him. I was a big fan of Kyrie Jackson. Um, so, you know, maybe just taking a swing at the bat again in next year's draft and a Benjamin Morrison. I think he's a top five player in this class, so getting him in at 10 is a very big win in my opinion. Moving on to number 11, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going Tetero and McMillan. And maybe this is a bit of a successor to Mike Williams, or sorry, Mike Evans. I mean, Mike Evans is up there in age. I know he's Mr. Consistent and, you know, consistently gets that thousand yards, but he is in his 30s now. He's not going to be going forever. And Tete Roa McMillan is basically the younger version of him, who's just a little bit lighter. I mean, he's a contested catch monster. He's able to, you know, go up, snag the ball, super reliable hands. Um, so, yeah, I like that pick. He's basically a smaller version of um, Mike Evans, at least weight-wise. Moving on to number 12, we got the Seattle Seahawks going Abdul Carter, the edge rusher out of Penn State. And Abdul Carter played a lot of off-ball linebacker last year. Um, he's going to be moving to edge rusher this season. So, you know, opinions on him are a bit all over the place. I do think he's a better edge rusher than um, off-ball linebacker because when he did play edge rusher, you know, the very few snaps he did last year, he looked very, very good. I'm just, I kind of want to see him play more edge rusher before I say he's a, you know, top 15 pick or even a first round pick in general. So I'm going to reserve the right to really have an opinion of, of Abdul Carter, but I do think he has the potential to be a first round pick. Moving on to 13, we got the Indianapolis Colts taking Colston Loveland, the tight end out of Michigan. I love this pick a lot. I do it on my mock drafts a lot. I really think getting Anthony Richardson an athletic receiving threat at the tight end position is key for his development. Anthony Richardson isn't a guy that's going to pick you apart with accuracy and precision. Um, but what he will do is he will find his, you know, really good targets and he's going to he's going to make big plays. So get receiving talent that's able to make big plays. They got Michael Pittman, Josh Downs, A.D. Mitchell, getting an explosive tight end target in Costa Loveland. I think it's a phenomenal pick in my opinion. Moving on to 14, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers going Emeka Abuka, the uh, wide receiver out of Ohio State. So it would be George Pickens, Roman Wilson, and Emeka Abuka as the receiving core. I think there's more pressing needs for the Steelers. Um, Emeka Abuka is cool. He had a down season last year. I think he's going to have a really big bounce back season, though, as that number one target there at Ohio State. But I'm a bigger fan of Emeka Abuka in the slot. And if that is the case, Roman Wilson's that slot player in Pittsburgh. So I don't know. I don't know if I like the fit there, but I do think Emeka Buka is going to have a bounce back season and be worth a first round pick. Moving on to 15, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars going Will Campbell, the uh, offensive tackle out of LSU. Now, I think Will Campbell is definitely worth more than a 15th uh, overall pick. I think he is still a top 10 player. Like I said, he's very, very close to Kelvin Banks, in my opinion. So the Jaguars getting him to pair alongside um, Anton Harrison on the other side. I mean, that's a good young offensive tackle duo. I'm not going to complain about that at all. Moving on to 16, we got the Cleveland Browns going Emory Jones Jr., the offensive tackle out of LSU. Um, a lot of people like Emory Jones more as a offensive guard. I'd be willing to try him out on offensive tackle, right tackle to be you know more specific. But, I mean... If he's not a tackle, I think he can move into guard and be an all-pro guard, in my opinion. So I'm not, I'm not mad at that at all. Cleveland Browns love running the football, so you know, bolstering up that offensive line is always a good idea, in my opinion. Moving on to 17, we got the Los Angeles Rams going Carson Beck, the quarterback out of Georgia. So getting the Matthew Stafford replacement. Yeah, I mean, after a, another full season for Stafford, he. I believe he's the second oldest starting quarterback in the league just behind Aaron Rodgers. So the Rams do got to start thinking about, you know, their replacement and getting another Georgia quarterback in Carson Beck, who maybe doesn't have the arm talent of a Matthew Stafford, but the processing ability is there similar to Matthew Stafford. So I'm not mad at that pick. I think it's always smart for teams to think ahead. Don't just draft a quarterback once your, you know, franchise quarterback retires. Try to think a few steps ahead and, you know, if that's what the uh, Los Angeles Rams are going to do, I'm not going to be mad at it. Moving on to 18, we got the Los Angeles Chargers taking Michael Williams, the edge rusher out of Georgia. And 
you know, I think Michael Williams has all the upside in the world, similar to an Abdul Carter. If they figure it out, they're going to be first-round picks. But as it stands right now, I don't think they're worth a first-round pick. So this is a big projection in my opinion. But if he meets his ceiling, I do think the Chargers could are justified for taking him here at 18. And, you know, you know, Michael Williams would probably be that Khalil Mack replacement. And so, hey, I'm not mad at that at all. Number 19, we got the Bears taking Princely Umamulin, the edge rush out of Ole Miss. And I'm a big fan of Princely Umamulin. I thought he was going to come out last year, and I thought he was an early second round pick. Uh, you know, another year of development, I think he's going to solidify himself as a first round pick. Pairing him alongside Montez Sweat, I think that's a very, very good edge rushing duo. I, you know, love when the Bears take uh, defensive linemen here in the first round. I think that's their best option here. They've really bolstered that uh, offense, so getting more help on that already pretty good defense, or not even pretty good, that very good defense, amazing pick in my opinion. Moving on at 20, we got the Atlanta Falcons taking Malachi Starks, the safety out of Georgia. And I haven't quite got around to watching, you know, a deep dive into Malachi Starks. I do know he's a very good safety, and almost everyone has him as a first-round player, so I'm not going to argue that. I just don't really have many opinions on him because I haven't fully watched him yet. But the Falcons could use safety help, so I'm not mad at that at all. Pairing him alongside Jesse Bates or being that replacement for him. Moving on to 21, we got the Miami Dolphins taking Denzel Burke, the cornerback out of Ohio State. Pairing him alongside Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey's also not, you know, a spring chicken anymore. He's up there in age. Uh, yeah, I like that. I typically go offensive linemen for the Dolphins, though. I think that's a more pressing need. But we had a few offensive linemen go early in the draft, so... You know, getting cornerback, that's also a good option in my opinion. Moving on to 22, we got the Green Bay Packers taking Walter Nolan, the defensive tackle out of Ole Miss. Now, I am probably the very few people that think Walter Nolan is a first-round player. I guess people are pretty low on Walter Nolan. I mean, you know, they can do them. I think Walter Nolan is definitely worth a back end of the first-round pick. The Packers love getting first-round talent on that defense, so, you know, just bolstering up that defensive line yet again. They already got a very deep defensive line, but getting one more, I guess, won't hurt. Screw it, I guess. Moving on to 23, we got the New York Jets taking Shadur Sanders, that quarterback out of Colorado. And just like I said with the Rams, they got an aging quarterback. And do I think Aaron Rodgers is going to like this pick? Probably not. You know, if he retires, then sure. But if Aaron Rodgers plays more than just next season, I think he's going to not be a big fan of the Shadur Sanders pick. So it really just depends on if Aaron Rodgers retires after this season or not, in my opinion. Because I think Matthew Stafford, when the Rams picked um, Carson Beck, I think he would be okay with having a rookie quarterback in that quarterback room. I don't necessarily think Aaron Rodgers would like that too much, especially as Shadur Sanders, who is in a, you know an attention magnet. I don't know how Aaron Rodgers would like that. Moving on to 24, we got the Houston Texans taking Aronde Gadsden, the receiver out of Syracuse. Now, Aronde Gadsden, I've seen him listed a lot at tight end, but he is kind of that quasi big receiving threat. Um, he was injured for the you know, majority of last season. I thought he was a really good tight end prospect, you know, last summer. I thought he was going to come out last season, but he got injured. Do I think he's a first round pick? No. I mean, do I think that the Texans even need receiver? No. Because I guess he's somewhat similar to a Nico Collins, that big receiver. But, no. I mean, I see the Houston Texans taking receiver a lot in these mock drafts. And I just don't think they need it. Even if Stephon Diggs is only here for a year, I, they have tanked down with Nico Collins. They don't need another receiver. You know, they could allocate this, you know, capital somewhere else in my opinion. Moving on to 25, we got the Dallas Cowboys taking Evan Stewart, the receiver out of Oregon. Another popular pick I've seen a lot is the Cowboys taking Evan Stewart. I don't think Evan Stewart's a first-round player. I mean, he is very, very uh, skinny. I believe he's like six foot 170, something crazy like that. And he doesn't break tackles at all. Like, I'm pretty sure he had zero, you know, forced missed tackles last season. Um, I think he can create, you know, pretty good separation on short routes. But I'm afraid that he's going to get bullied off his routes a lot just due to his size. So uh, he's not a first-round pick in my opinion as of right now. 
Moving on to 26, we got the Philadelphia Eagles taking Nick Scourton, the edge rusher out of Texas A&M. The fact that he fell this far is kind of insane. I believe he's a fringe top 10 player in my opinion. Uh, so the Eagles just getting talent that falls. That's kind of what they do. Last year they got Quinny Mitchell, Cooper DeJean. Uh, the year before that they got uh, Nolan Smith. Like they just take best player available and there's always some good talent that falls you know, late in the first round. So Nick Scourton, getting some size on that defensive line is also a very, very good um, good thing to do because right now they have Bryce Huff and um, Nolan Smith, both kind of those athletic edge rushers who aren't great against the run. Nick Scourton is that big 280-pound edge rusher who's going to be able to stop the run. I like that pick a lot for the Eagles, unfortunately. Moving on to 27, we got the Cincinnati Bengals taking Isaiah Bond, the receiver out of Texas. Um, yeah, especially if T. Higgins is out. Um, Isaiah Bonds, that speedy, shifty receiver, basically the complete opposite of T. Higgins. But, you know, him and Jamar Chase can play on the outside. Isaiah Bond be that deep threat. I'm not mad at that at all. Uh, you know, Joe Burrow's used to having two really good receivers, so trying to replace T. Higgins with Isaiah Bond, I'm not mad at it. 28, we got the Buffalo Bills taking Jalen or Jalen Walker, the edge rusher out of Georgia. I haven't gotten around to watching Jalen Walker. I do know he's similar to Michael Williams, a uh, developmental edge rusher with, you know, really big athletic traits. Um, I just, I can't, I don't have many opinion, opinions on him just because I haven't fully watched him yet. Moving on to 29, we got the Detroit Lions taking Joey Slagman, the defensive tackle out of Florida. Another player I have not watched and I, another player that I have not seen in the first round a lot at all. I know close to nothing about Joey Slackman right now. So, again, not going to talk about him, but that's an interesting pick and probably a big projection. Number 30, we got the Baltimore Ravens going to Harold Perkins, the linebacker slash edge rusher-ish from LSU. Um, pairing him alongside Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith being that tackle, you know, run stopper. Harold Perkins, very, very good in pass coverage and also very good at blitzing off the edge. I mean, I think that's a perfect, you know, mix between your edge rushers. I'm sorry, your linebackers. Roquan Smith being that run stuffer. Harold Perkins being that blitzer pass coverage guy. Perfect fit, in my opinion. Moving on to 31, we got the San Francisco 49ers taking Tyleek Williams, the defensive tackle out of Ohio State. And, yeah, he's a fringe first-round pick, in my opinion. Though I think the 49ers could go somewhere else that's a little bit more important, like cornerback or maybe receiver replacing either Brandon Ayuk or Debo Samuel, whichever one leaves. Um, but yeah, I like Tyleek Williams, but I personally would have went with a maybe a Takario Davis, Jabbar Muhammad at cornerback, or even go with a, I don't know, a, a Trey Harris or maybe a, who else is a receiver that hasn't been picked yet? I don't know. There's been a lot of receivers picked so far. But yeah, I would go with one of those two positions over a defensive tackle. And then lastly, rounding out the first round, we got the Kansas City Chiefs going TJ Sanders, the defensive tackle out of South Carolina. Uh, sure, I think there's better defensive tackles like a Kenneth Grant is still on the board. But yeah, I mean, getting in a defensive tackle to pair alongside Chris Jones, sure, I'm not mad at it. I usually like going uh, tight end here just to, you know, get that Travis Kelsey replacement, but I'm not mad at defensive tackle either. And yeah, that's going to do it. Let me know what you guys think of this mock draft. Definitely an interesting mock draft. I don't necessarily think I agree with a lot of these picks, but it's still the beginning of the draft cycle. There's going to be a lot of hot takes in these mock drafts. So let me know what you guys thought of it. And this is the Draft Nerd. Thanks for watching.